I want to ask you one other thing that we haven't talked about, but I, I want to know if it pertains to the blood brain barrier at all. And that's blood pressure. So hypertension, and I guess hyperlipidemia also pose enormous risk for not just cardiovascular disease, where they are two of the three biggest drivers of risk, but they also pose a risk um, in, in Alzheimer's disease. And I, I wonder, do either of those act specifically through the blood brain barrier? It, it is another really uh, important, modifiable lifestyle factor that can affect Alzheimer's disease risk. And, you know, so blood pressure, maintaining good blood pressure. So, I mean, basically you want to be systolic below 130, right? I mean, like once you get to 130. <coughs> the, the sprint trial would even say 120. 120. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the, the, the blood pressure itself. So getting that blood flow to the brain, blood brain barrier specifically is so important. Um, when you don't have, you know, that, that when that blood flow doesn't, you know, basically isn't able to get to the blood brain barrier well enough, um, those tiny little vessels start to like just fall off. And it's one of the reasons why exercise also is so, so important. Um, so yeah, blood pressure. So there's, a, there's been a variety of studies that have looked, you know, of course, as you mentioned, you know, the, the observational data is, is never a, able to establish causation, but it's still a, an interesting point to look at in combination with many other types of data, right? But um, As, especially that, when it's always in the same direction. I mean, I think that's what exactly. always, that's what differentiates the epidemiology around, for example, exercise and blood pressure from the epidemiology around nutrition. The epidemiology around nutrition, A, it has very low hazard ratios and it's always changing the direction it's moving in suggesting that whatever's being studied probably doesn't matter. Yet when you look at, you know, the epidemiology of smoking, blood pressure, dyslipidemia, exercise, much bigger hazard ratios, virtually always pointing in the same direction. So it strikes me that the latter is signal, the former is noise. Right. Good point. Um, yeah. So blood pressure is associated particularly, um, so, you know, 50% of, of people, adults in the U.S. have hypertension. And about 20% of young adults, like we're talking people age 18 to 39 have hypertension. Like that's crazy, right? And and it's actually the the high blood pressure. It's the cumulative exposure to high blood pressure that's really damaging the vasculature. And so it's the younger people. Um, it's the people that have it earlier in life that should be the most concerned and are the least, right? Those are the ones that are like, oh, I'm young. You know, I can worry about it later. Uh, but yeah, so high high blood pressure is associated with dementia risk, particularly when you have it like before you know the fifties. Like so, when you start, when you get it in your you know before the fifties or you know midlife, um, once you start to get high blood pressure in older age, like 70, 80, um, it's not as much associated with you know the the Alzheimer's disease and dementia risk. So um, it really does seem like cumulative exposure is the uh, the key factor there, but. Um, you know, again, one of those things that, you know, is a, is a lifestyle factor that's easily modifiable. Exercise improves blood pressure. Sauna improves blood pressure, right? Those are two, you know, basically low hanging fruit lifestyle inter interventions. Some people do have gene um, polymorphisms where they're very sensitive to salt intake and sodium mm -hmm. intake. And, and that combination of those people with like a higher sodium intake really seems to skyrocket blood pressure. It also, I think, is one of, like you were mentioning nutrition, I think it's also looking at the combination of genes and diet. Most nutrition studies don't do that. Like they don't. And there, there is an interaction going on. And I do think that's why some of the sodium intake blood pressure literature is just a little more, um, I, don't, I would yeah, say- Yeah, it's all over uh, the place. Complicated. Yeah. Right. It <laughs>